Put your game face on here. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Good morning. I call to order the September 1st, 2020 meeting of the Saline County Board of Commissioners. Will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Shadwick? Here. Commissioner Sparks? Here. Commissioner Vidrickson? Here. Commissioner Weiss? Here. Commissioner White? Here. I see. Please stand. Join me in a flag salute, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We'll move to the citizens' input uh, portion of our meeting where citizens may speak on county government, usually limited to three minutes. Does anyone wish to address the commission? Seeing that, I'll bring it back uh, to the commission for regular business. We'll move to the consent agenda, which consists of uh, approval of the minutes for August 25th, approval of tax roll adjustments, approval of accounts payable and payroll, approval of public forum agenda. Does anyone wish to amend or correct this? Seeing none, uh, the consent agenda will stand approved. Uh, we'll move to action items. Item number one. RFA number 207-20, K-Work Voting Delegate Trustee Nominations, Marilyn Lamer, Human Resources Director. Good morning, Marilyn. Good morning, Commissioners. Annually, uh, K-Work requests us to designate an elected official as a voting delegate and an alternate delegate to represent Sling County at the KEC Annual Conference. Um, they are also requesting nominations for an at-large trustee for the K-Work Board. That part is optional. Uh, K-Work's annual meeting will be virtual this year and it will occur on October 14th and it will happen directly um, after the KAC virtual annual conference. And so the actions requesting today is to designate a Saline County elected official as a voting delegate for Saline County, designate a uh, Sling County elected official as an alternate delegate should the delegate not be able to attend. Nominate an elected official from an eligible member county on the attached list to serve as a trustee at large or take no action. The recommendation is to designate a voting delegate and an alternate for Saline County. Uh, item number two, which is to nominate an elected official from an eligible member county, that one again is optional. Okay, normally I would say uh, that the chairman should probably be the voting delegate. However, with uh, my position as, as a, uh, a member of the KAC governing board, which is the one that's presenting this, I think that that uh, responsibility should go to someone else on the, on the uh, commission. Um, the time frame of that uh, day, I mean, is it an all day event or is it uh, just the voting at the no, first? I think it's gonna be an abbreviated meeting. Um, they did not give the details on how long the meeting will be. Let, let me let me uh, respond to that. I know a little bit about that. Um, uh, they will have, or they are putting together, and I've seen it, and I can't tell you what it is right this second, but uh, it will have time slots for each and everything. So in other words, if there's something that is supposedly to go from 9 to 10, and it only goes to 9.30, then they will the, the the virtual part of it will stop and the, you know that way if someone sees a something they want to attend they can go to their computer and attend it at the designated time so whenever that time uh, is will be reflected in their in their agenda if that makes sense to you right when they have the actual conferences in past years um, I believe that K work board meeting lasted an hour or two. And um, that is Commissioner Sparks, you attended last year. Yep. You were the, the de delegate last year. So that would be um, a, a responsibility of, of a commissioner to, to uh, be virtually connected. And, and if that's okay, then I would nominate Roger as the, as the vice chairman to be that voting delegate for Saline County. Second. Are there any other nominations? That's been moved and seconded that we uh, uh, designate Roger Sparks as our voting delegate for the KAC uh, annual meeting. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 
And will you be also selecting a, an alternate delegate just in case something should come up and Commissioner Sparks could not make it? I would be happy to be that person. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Commissioner, Commissioner Shadwick nominated himself to be uh, the uh, alternate and uh, it was seconded by Roger Sparks. I'm a good B-teamer. There you go. All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. I'm the JV. So now we're at a... Uh, uh, a the, the last item on there is um, you have the opportunity to nominate an elected official from an eligible member county uh, to serve as the trustee at large. Uh, that one has a little bit more time commitment to it. Um, there are several counties on the list. Um, Marilyn, do you serve on that board? No, it has to be an elected official. Oh, it has to be an elected official, excuse me. Yeah. Um, when I did reach out to um, legal counsel at Kate Work, they did say that they had somebody that was interested in doing it but was still considering it. So if you do not take any action on this, somebody else could de um, nominate that individual. I, I, I don't have an opinion on this one, how important it is for us to have someone there or not, or I don't. And it has to be from another county? No, it could be from uh, Sling County. It could be County. from Sling oh, County oh, as gotcha, well. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. If we don't have any names available, I'd uh, hate to yeah, just I mean, pick uh, a name out of a hat. Does and this need to be done today, or <clears throat> no, it does not? You know, I, I would. I mean, I kind of like to be represented on these boards, and I think uh, maybe we should take a, an inner office poll if we could uh, to see if uh, maybe the clerk or treasurer or uh, uh, any other elected official might be interested in that in that position, and and then bring it back to us next week for a for a nomination or, you know, potential and suggestion. If, and if nobody is interested, it just drops. Uh, yeah, if nobody's interested, okay. I'd say we... Okay. And, and I mean, I don't, I don't know what about any other uh, surrounding counties that might have expressed an interest, and if they have, they should let us know, but... Yeah, there, there's quite a list of eligible counties I, I on that. there, so... You know, I imagine they'll probably get somebody um, interested in serving. Okay, well, I think it does serve us so well, though, if we can get one of our elected officials to be on that board, so okay. uh, we might check that out. Okay, I'll so. ask around. Okay. All right. So that, uh, let's see here. I guess we do need a uh, an approval of the RFA itself, which we've already... That's not true. We're on the we're on the K Works one. So we're taking no action there is what it amounts to. Well, I, you, the RFA does include um, designating a delegate for Sling County and also an alternate delegate. So you have made that, that so, motion. Yeah, we, we did the and, motion without okay. the uh, RFA numbers attached to it. So we have approved RFA 207-20. Uh, and that uh, we designated uh, Roger and Maudie as alternate and and uh, the designated person. All right, we'll move to informational items after I get done talking about all of that. <laughs> Item number one. Road and Bridge update, Darren Fisher, <clears throat> Road and Bridge Administrator. Good morning, Darren. Good morning. Good morning. This is our Road and Bridge Maintenance Division update. I uh, just kind of let people know what we've been doing for the last couple months and what we have planned. Uh, we did assist the, the voting booth delivery um, in August. We did trash pickups and debris removal. We did have an asphalt entrance you repair. Turn your mic on. It's on. Um, this is an asphalt entrance repair um, where we had to get some water from a hydrant and we did damage to this gentleman's driveway. This was on North Street. Um, we did replace 13 crossroad and entrance culverts. This is at Watkins Road west of Miller. This is an old concrete culvert that had separated and collapsed. Uh, this is at Miller and Watkins. There is actually a culvert in there that had uh, uh, filled up with sediment and, and wasn't any good anymore. 
This is Holmes Road north of Waterwell Road. This was actually, actually Roger called me on July, July 4th. It was, it was the day before. The day before July 4th. There was this, uh, this culvert here had deteriorated and undermined and there, there was a big void under the road and it had collapsed. This was a concrete box that somebody at some time or another had added a culvert to and then poured a head wall on. So in running the drainage area, we discovered it could be just one large culvert. Uh, so the excavation was uh, considerably large uh, because of those two structures being replaced with just one. And we did uh, pour some concrete over the top of it since it was on an asphalt road since, so it wouldn't settle. And then this is the finish. This is uh, Campbell Road west of Simpson. There was a waterway coming into this culvert and it had, it had collapsed also. So we did some ditch work. And as you see here, there's these uh, AT&T uh, phone pedestals here. One of the things we, we deal with every day is, is buried utilities. This is Salemsburg Road and Ohio Street. This, this uh, uh, flow line of this water, there was, there was no culvert here. So this, this drainage here would just pool right here. Uh, so what we did was we put a culvert in right here uh, because <coughs> this right here is actually a road. So there wasn't any way to put a, a, a culvert here. So we put a culvert here and then we did some ditch work with the motor grader to get the drainage to there. This is Crawford Street, east of Amos. This is after one of the heavy rains. Um, the road, it, it washed over the road and, and the, because the culvert had a hole in it. This is Amos and Cloud Street. This is a, a intersection of two earth roads. And every once in a while we do run into a place that there is no culvert but probably should have had one. Um, the drainage here is to the west. Um, and every time it would rain hard, it would just run across here and, and eat that intersection out. This is Cunningham Road south of Magnolia. This is a, a gravel mile that we reshaped and added aggregate and rebuilt. This is a bridge up on uh, McGavern Road north of Paulson, and it is back in a, a closed minimum maintenance road but it does provide access to uh, a couple of properties back there. Um, one of the issues with this bridge is, is we, well, we get trash. This is on the mulberry. Um, and then when it washes out, uh, the, the ends of the bridge fall in. And so if you look at this picture, you can see this driven piling up here. Well, it had all started to rot out. And, and rust. So when the water came through here fast, it would take all the dirt that was off the end of the bridges with it. So we excavated the bridge ends and put this galvanized sheet piling in there. We went lower than the existing there and we left the old, the old structures there. We did not remove these so when these do rot out eventually there'll, there'll be this new back wall behind there. And then so we did some, um, repaired some box culvert. This is a wooden box culvert on Muir Road north of Cloud Street. This is a, a, a wooden structure and the, the, uh, the stringers underneath were broken in, in multiple places. But with what was crossing that, uh, the back wall was good. So we, we took the, the wood off and replaced it with these, these galvanized steel beams here and this uh, bridge decking. And these were purchased off of Purple Wave uh, several years ago. If you remember, I came and asked for an RFA to purchase these beams and, and decking. And we did put the gentleman's uh, little things back on there. That was important to him. And then we put aggregate surfacing over the top of it. This is on uh, Powers Road north of uh, State Street. 
Um, after heavy rain, you can see that it came in and it, this, uh, this wing wall here had deteriorated and the water came around here and was starting to eat in the road. So we excavated that and put in a laminate um, post and bridge decking. And this bridge decking actually was recycled, uh, harvested from the closed bridges several years ago. We kept all of that material and, and we recycle a lot of stuff. So we have, uh, this is a, a box on Farley Road east of Kip. This was just field drainage. So as we look at areas, um, we think who has access, what's the type of access, and what's the lay of the land. And since this was just field drainage, we removed this. It's an earth road, so um, when it's rainy and muddy, you can't get to this box. So we removed that box and made, did some earthwork and made a little low water swell through there. So when the water comes through there, it'll just keep on going. And then when it dries out, the people will be able to get to their property. Very good candidate place for a, a low water crossing. This is Hobbs Creek Road. This just shows you some of the work that the rural patrolmen have been doing after harvest. Uh, fortunately, it's been dry enough this year uh, we go in there with a motor grader to clean the ditch and just put the dirt back in the, out into the field. It's a very um, cost-effective way of cleaning ditches. And this is Muir Road south of <coughs> Thorstenburg. Here's another one where the, the dirt just went back out into the field. We did repair and replace 271 signs and we have started um, our countywide pavement marking. Uh, we hauled 8,372 ton of rock, 1,935 ton of AB3, 6,345 ton of sand, and 1,005 ton of what, what we call plant waste. That's material we purchased from the asphalt plant at a, at a very reasonable price. Um, we have plans to replace about 30 more culverts. Uh, we're going to start rebuilding the roads in Sundowner West. As late as it is in, this, in the season right now, I imagine we'll probably just do the roads this fall, the one road that goes all the way around Sundowner West, and then do the interior roads in the spring. We have 650 ton of aggregate to haul, 1,537 ton of sand, and 405 ton of AB3. Because it has been dry, we've been able to make some headway uh, catching up with our aggregate haul. And we have started our fall dura patch which is uh, prior to sealing, we go around and, and patch the holes. And our budget, budget items are pretty much in line with the historical averages. Okay, Darren, thank you for the update. Uh, I, I wanna alert you to the fact that I'm still getting calls uh, uh, periodically about the, the, the type of gravel that we're putting on the road or a new, new rock that we, because of people uh, uh, damaging tires, ruining tires. Uh, have we been able to come to the to a conclusion with the uh, uh, providers of that material as to if is that what we really want or whatever? Well, next year when we do our bids for aggregate, I'm going to I'm going to get an alternate bid for for smaller, cleaner rock, and and the commission can make a decision that way. Well, I think our decision was a mistake this last year, that's for sure, and based on the number of calls that I've gotten. As a matter of fact, I was one of those people that, that lost a tire to that rock that was out there on the road. So uh, I, know it's, I know it is a real I issue, so. Okay, uh, other questions or comments from commissioners? How's that new broom working out for you, Darren? It works well. They're, they're striping and uh, it, it is, work, works good. I saw it in action, so. Did you? <laughs> All right, if no one else has anything, thank you for the update. Okay, I was just going to go ahead. Okay. Uh, something I would like to look at down the road is when we, when we go out and we put out for bids that on a culvert thing or a large bridge is that, you know, we always put in there that they have to seed things and, and plant grass and stuff. But when the county does it, we don't have to do that. Why, why is that? If I mean, it is a large project, we seed. Oh, okay. Uh, um, you know, there's a difference between seeding next to residential, 
mm -hmm. and seeding out in the county. So if it's just a small project, most residents just want to put their own seed out there. What we seed with is just um, an annual rye, mm -hmm. just to get some cover. Well, in your specs, though, you talk about how much percentage of brome and how much of this and how much of that. So the grass looks like you've got stuff in there that will continue to grow over the period of time. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just curious because it's like when we don't, all I see is pretty much is weeds and trees growing back in those areas that we don't seed nothing in. And we do seed large projects. Okay. Small projects we don't. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Uh, we'll move to item number two. County Commissioner's update. Morning, Phil. Uh, good morning, County Administrator Philip Smith Haynes. A um, few items to update the Commission on. Um, first, regarding our radio communications project. Uh, commissioners will remember that this is a, a project that we've had on the books for some time. We issued an RFP and uh, were evaluating uh, proposals and then got delayed a little bit with the pandemic, but ended up having a special joint meeting with City of Salina Commission and um, the bodies agreed by consensus to go ahead and negotiate with the top two firms and those negotiations have now concluded. We do have a recommendation and there will be another uh, special joint meeting, uh, your commission and the Salina City Commission next Tuesday, 1030 over at the uh, Chamber Annex. And we are also working on financing options for you all, which I hope to have in front of you uh, two weeks from today. Uh, next is the Coronavirus Relief Fund. As you will recall, this is the $11,026,434 that the state passed down to us from uh, the Federal CARES Act, and we submitted our uh, plan for spending that money uh, on uh, the 14th of August. And the state last Friday informed us that they hope to have decisions on the plans out to counties this week. Um, so we are anxiously awaiting that. In the meantime, uh, I've gotten quite a few of the uh, documents back from the different um, entities that were part of that plan and we'll be bringing a package to the commission for those. Uh, the third item for today is the jail uh, outreach on the jail uh, election for this November. Uh, of course, your commission approved putting a measure on the ballot on November 3rd, asking voters to approve a construction of a new jail and a half cent uh, countywide sales tax to pay those costs. So we are moving forward with trying to inform the public more about that. Uh, yesterday we approved a proof for a flyer um, which is also available on our website and uh, we'll be getting some of those printed up, distributing them to all the different county departments, giving some to each of the commissioners for you to distribute uh, as you go on speaking engagements. We're working with Salina Media Connection on a, a video and um, I would also remind and encourage everyone in the public who might be interested to go to our website and sign up. Uh, we do have a list of folks who get updated when we have new information and we do have the ballot language up on the web page as well. And finally, I would just like to remind everybody that um, next Monday will be Labor Day and county offices will be closed. That's all I had for this morning. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from anyone? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Commissioner comments. Anyone have anything? Announcements? If not, it looks like next up is uh, executive session for non-elected personnel. And this is coming from... Administration? 
Yeah, the first item would be uh, non-elected personnel regarding fire district number five. And do you have an estimated time on that? Yeah, we could probably start with 20 minutes and I think that'll be good enough. 20 minutes, did you say? Yes. All right, I'll take a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move we recess into executive section under the non-elected personnel exemption to Kansas Open Meeting Act for 15 or 20 minutes and reconvene in this room at 945. This is regarding uh, RFD number five. Second the motion. It's been moved and second that we move into executive session for 20 minutes uh, for non-elected personnel, rural fire district number five. All of those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Both same sign. We are in executive session. Uh, and we will move to item number two, which is non-elected personnel executive session. Again, I would ask, uh, and that will be with Marilyn, and it would be for 10 minutes. Mr. Chairman, I move we recess into executive session under the um, uh, non-elected personnel exemption to the Kansas Open Meeting Act for 10 minutes and reconvene in this room at 10 minutes from now. Oh, 9.58. Second the motion. Been moved and second that we move into executive session for non-elected personnel to last for 10 minutes. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We're in executive session for 10 minutes. We are back from uh, our executive session, and I believe that there is some appropriate action to be taken. Mr. Chairman, I move that we direct our Human Resource Director, Marilyn Lamer, to offer um, an extension to the contract of uh, the County Administrator for five one-year terms. Second there, motion. It's been moved and seconded that mm -hmm. we uh, ex extend the contract of our uh, County Administrator Philip Smith Haynes for an additional one year uh, on a, on a five-year agreement. Uh, are there comments? And I will say that I, I support this action. I'm very supportive of uh, Philip Smith Haynes. He has stepped into a hornet's nest unintentionally, I might add, and uh, with the COVID, with the Expo Center, uh, with the radio thing, uh, and he has hit the ground running. And he is. Uh, we're lucky that, that uh, Phil came along. That's, that's all I'll say. As, a, as an organization, as a county, as citizens, we're lucky that Mr. Smith Haynes uh, joined our staff. And, and his leadership has been invaluable as far as I'm concerned. So other, other commissioner comments? Agreed. 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 All right, there's been a motion and a second. All of those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. We will move to item number three, which is an employer-employee negotiations uh, executive session for ten. 10 minutes. Mr. Chairman, I move we recess into executive session under the employee-employer negotiations exemption to the Kansas Open Meeting Act for five minutes and reconvene in this room at 10.05. She said 10. I know, I said okay, five. He said five. five. He either okay. second or don't. <laughs> second. Okay, it's been moved and second that we move into executive session for five minutes for Open Meetings Act and reconvene at uh, B1005. All, right. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Both same sign. We're in executive session.
Okay, we are back into regular session uh, from employer-employee negotiations, and I will add that there is uh, no action taken once again. So, uh, at this point in time, I would take uh, an, a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Been moved and second that we adjourn today's meeting. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> We're adjourned. Thank you for watching.